As we've been reporting all week, a music festival was one of the first targets of Hamas. Our Holly Williams traveled to the site. In the scrubland of southern Israel is strewn the aftermath of a party that became a bloody massacre. Look, people's mattresses, their tents, their blankets are still here. Thousands of people were gathered here around three miles from the border with the Gaza Strip, sitting ducks for Hamas. This place is indescribably eerie. Young people came here for a party, for a celebration, and then they were slaughtered. And here you can still see their toiletries, a toothbrush, their clothing. Early on Saturday, after a night of dancing, Hamas gunmen arrived with murder on their mind. As partygoers ran for their lives, they were cut down. Israel says at least 260 people were killed. Others were taken captive to hold as hostages. It's too much to talk about. We found these men as they returned to collect their belongings. It was hell, they told us. One of the militant's motorbikes is still here, along with a stench of death. Just behind me is the dead body of one of the militants, and it's been left here intentionally by the Israeli military. Soldiers are here to guard the area from another attack and to clean up the carnage. Suddenly, a shot rang out. And then another. We've been told to get down. We don't, we don't know what's happening at this point. There were several minutes of confusion. Israel is a country on edge, and it's little wonder why. Ahead of us, the soldiers had a man surrounded and on the ground. There was a person who was arrested. He had a knife. Everything is under control. There are fears that militants could still be hiding inside Israel. And the man apprehended today is being questioned. There is high alert here for a reason. 260 people were butchered here less than a week ago. And that's why the forces are here, to make sure that it's safe to come back here. But after a nightmare on this scale, Israel's sense of security has been shattered. Holly joins us now. Holly, this, the festival is about three miles away from the border with Gaza. Talk a little bit more about what it was like to be there. I mean, you, I saw, you see the reaction when, when you guys heard these shots go off. Well, look, I'll tell you my reaction when I went to the, the scene of that massacre, Jeff. I was, I was struck, I think, by the horrific juxtaposition because on the one hand, um, physically, it's a place of, of extreme beauty. Um, it's, it's truly pretty, and I can see why those young people wanted to have their overnight musical festival there. Um, and on the other hand, um, there is the aftermath of something uh, that was done with just utter brutality. There's obviously quite a heavy military presence there now, and, and we saw one of the soldiers just walking through the scene of that massacre and looking completely shell-shocked. And I think there's something to remember about, about Israel more broadly, which is that this is a tiny country. It's tiny geographically, but it also has a really small population. It's around, it's around 10 million people who live here. So there were 260 people killed at that one location alone. So many people know someone, had a relative, had a friend of a friend who was there or was killed there or has been, been taken hostage. This is so personal for nearly everybody in this country. Holly, you also spoke with the father of an Israeli hostage. What did he have to say? So this was earlier this week, Jeff, and it's the, the woman that you see being hauled away on the motorbike in our report. And that video has had a lot of views all over the world. It's very upsetting. She's screaming for help. Her name is Noah Agamani, um, and it was actually her 26th birthday today. Um, we interviewed her father, Yaakov, earlier this week. Noah is his only daughter. His wife uh, is battling cancer. Um, and we asked him what he wanted the Israeli government to do to get his daughter back. And I want to read the direct quote to you. He said, only by peaceful measures. They, and by they, he means the Palestinians. They also have mothers who are crying the same as it is for us. I thought that was quite an extraordinary answer. Holly Williams, thank you.